Because if you read, you realize that Paul makes a lot of reference to himself. I, even I do this, so you should do that. You know, and he, he was instructing, he was being specific as to what they should do. You know, because the church was riddled with so much confusion, he had to, he had to make distinct, you know, the, um, uh, differences between what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And he, he goes, if you read the, the book of Corinthians, it's amazing. He talks about um, so many things, from, from how to worship, to Lord's Supper, to marriage, to love. He talks about so many things. So one, he wrote to instruct and to restore the church. Two, he wrote to correct erroneous practices. To change people's ideas and, and you know, uh, 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 thoughts on certain things. To change and to correct them. Division and immorality in the church. Mitigation, that was one of the things, like I said, the Greek people, you know, the Greek culture, they, they will take you to court right now because they have an opinion on, on, on what should be, you know. And so you can imagine even in the church, people taking their, their, their fellow church members to court. How do you pray as a church? <laughs> because you want both of them to win, but none of them wants the other one to win. How, how do you pray as a church? You know, when I have taken Elder to, to court for, you know, maybe his dog ran over my hedge <laughs> and, and has destroyed the hedge. Things like that. It was, it, was, it was just beyond Paul. He just could not understand why the church, because the church is gifted. Hallelujah. Amen. I am an example of Christ in my generation. Abuse of the Lord's Supper. The, the Lord's Supper is a scary thing. If you if you will sit down and read and, and let the Spirit of God reveal to you the true meaning of the Lord's Supper, it's a scary thing. Something not to be messed about with. And they, they were they were just, you know, they were just walking over it just like that. False teachings. It's one thing Paul hated. False teachings. Thirdly, he wrote to give instructions concerning offering. Offering. Now, to be an example of Christ in your generation, how are we to do this? Looking at the church. In, in, the, in, the, in the city of Corinth. How are we to do this? If we read back at the... Um, if we read the uh, first Corinthians again, please. Just to the 16. It says, Therefore I urge you to imitate me. For this reason I am sending you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ. Now there are a few key words I want us to pay attention to over here. He says, imitate me. For this reason I am sending you Timothy. Now, this, this is just beautiful. I was just, it, it, when, I was, when I was, you know, reading and thinking about it, I'm praying about it, it just came to me. When Jesus, when, G, when Jesus was leaving, he sent to somebody, didn't he? So the, the church of Corinth had Timothy, and we today, who do we have? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is the description of Timothy. He says what? My son whom I love, who is Faithful in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you. It's 
it's, 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 such, it's just like the Holy Spirit. That is what the, you know, the Bible talks about when, it's, when, when Jesus was saying, I will send you a comforter and he will teach you, he will remind you, he will rebuke you. He will he, you know, is, is that like uh, a, a spirit personified? That's right. In Timothy. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have somebody who reminds us of the way of life in Christ. Now, which agrees with what I teach everywhere. So there's an agreement as well. Now, how do we then, looking at Timothy, looking at his way of life, there are two things that we need to consider if we are going to be examples of Christ in our generation. Progressive sanctification. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to assume that we have all accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. You know, we've gone through that process of confessing our sins and accepting Jesus Christ. We've, we've been justified. Okay? Jesus Christ has justified us. You know, we, we, have, we, we, have, we don't deserve it. We haven't done anything to get it. But because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we're justified. Now, sanctification has to take place. Mm -hmm. Now, I put the word progressive because it is something we have to do daily. In fact, the word sanctification itself <coughs> it is, means for you to do, you know, the, it's, it's like walking and making yourself holy constantly, constantly. Every second of it, every minute, every chance you have, you are trying to sanctify yourself. You're doing things right. Righteous living. Hallelujah. Amen. And I've put the word progressive to emphasize that we have to be conscious to work on it. Hallelujah. Progressive sanctification. Now, when, as, 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 as people, um, the only way that we can, if, or not the only way, but I have, I have termed it like the, the triangle of life. We, we have a relationship with God. And then we have a relationship with the church and with man. Okay. Um... We can always, for instance, I can accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, Holy Spirit filled, baptized. If I stay at home, I do not come to church, I do not minister to anybody else, I am not being an example of Christ. It, 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 the triangle is not complete. Does that make sense? You can't have children and then leave the children and then go and stay someone else and say, you know what, I'm a dad now, I've got children, I've done it, I've married. You're not living with them anymore, you've left them, but you've done it, haven't you? Yeah, you've accomplished it. You can do the degrees, get the qualifications, and not work and stay at home. You've done it. Your parents have bumped you, you go to school, do this, you've done it, you stay in the home. What's the point? You, you become... You're worse than somebody who hasn't even been to school. Because you supposedly have the wisdom or the knowledge, but you are not applying the knowledge. You have had the children, you're not looking after them. You're married, you're not loving your wife or your husband. Does that make sense? And so, to be an example of Christ, this, this triangle has to be complete. Hallelujah. Amen. So I have to have a relationship with God through progressive sanctification. Because I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And so for me to continue to walk right with God, I have to progressively sanctify myself. And as I am doing that, then my relationship with the church and with man is complete. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Because I can promise you, if, if, if God, if Christ were to leave the church right now, here, the quarrels that will turn up, and this person has done this to me, this person has said that, this person has done that, this person looked at me wrong. <laughs> I mean, just looking at somebody wrong is, is, is a quarrel in itself. And we know that, don't we? But you see, that is why it is important that we stay connected to Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end my sermon, but this is what I came to, to say to you. Now, we, we've heard the theme, I am an example of Christ. It, and I like the way the theme goes. It says, I am. You are declaring that you are, even if you're not. <laughs> so, we are working towards that. Amen. 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 To be. Amen. Amen. I am an example of Christ. And I like that because even in even, even the secular world, they, they tell you that if you are... If you want to achieve something, if you want to do something, you work at it. You you tell yourself. You wake up in the morning. I, I read I read a, a little thing about entrepreneurs, for instance, and some of the most successful entrepreneurs. They wake up in the morning, they eat good breakfast very early in the morning. Put, eat good breakfast, do some physical exercises, you know, and then they say to themselves, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." And then they do the most important jobs in the morning, and then the rest of the day they chill, and you know. The money just flows. And they tell themselves, when they, when they come across any challenge, they tell themselves, I'm going to get this. I'm going to do this. He hasn't got it. But he's saying to himself, he's going to do it. You see, because you are, you are telling the, the subconscious mind not to, you know, lose focus. Not to lose, even they understand that. How much more we who have the God who created the world. Hallelujah. Amen. He threw stars into the universe. Like that. Stars. Scientists spent decades trying to calculate the distance from Earth to a star. And God was just throwing them into the universe. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is the God we serve. Amen. Amen. So this is this is what I, this is the message that I brought to you. And the message is in Galatians chapter 5, from the verse 16. We're going to, I'm going to read from verse 16. Um, I'll just read from the NIV. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 16. It says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, hallelujah, you are not under the law. Hmm. 19 says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy. Some of these words, I don't think we've ever heard them. Anyway. <laughs> Drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Timothy was a faithful son. Gentleness and self-control. Against <coughs> such things, there is no law. How can I be an example of Christ in my generation? If I were to be living in Corinth, how could I do that? I am in Nottingham. How, how can I do this? Some of us have come from London, from wherever. How, how can I, in, in, my, in, in, in my home, how can I live in my community, amongst my university friends, college friends, amongst, uh, if I play football, my football colleagues, 
um, if I play basketball, my basketball colleagues, rugby, whatever. How can I live as an example of Christ? Because at the end of the day, we are flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. That is what we are. But the Bible says here what? By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Friends, it, it, it does not matter how old or young we are. The Spirit of God is no respecter of age. It's no respecter of age. It is, back in those days, it, even G, let's look at Jesus. When he was ministering to the apostles in the church, even his parents were thinking, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you sitting in the synagogue preaching to answer questions to apostles? Even we cannot do that. Because you need to know the word. I mean, you, when, uh, when the, you see, back in those days, when the Spirit of God came upon you, it, you, you a lot of them were old. They, they used to live to three, four, five hundred, six hundred years. So you can imagine in those days, the apostles were not young men. They were old, frilled men. Sat there and they barely moved. You know, but they knew the Torah. They knew the scriptures. Mm. And this young boy, he, he, he was he was teen, he was a teenager. He was a boy. And he was preaching, he was answering deep questions. So it does not matter how young you are. Listen, if you will avail yourself and, and, and speak to God, spend five, ten minutes every night and say to God, God reveal these secrets to me. What is it? What is it am I to do in my generation? What, why am I here? Friday I was telling uh, Nana, I went to a funeral. And the man had studied. He had two PhDs. He did chemistry. He, 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 he knew when he was young, uh, he was a twin. He, 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 was, he, he was so smart, all his education, he's, he's had um, scholarships. Scholarships all the way to America, you know? And even was in America, as he was studying, he was, he was getting awards from the state for being so good. Married for only five years, didn't have any children, and then he passed away. And I'm, I'm thinking, why? Why is all of us even struggling to finish our first degrees? <laughs> so what is the point in life? What is the point? God has, has put us here for a very good reason, friends. To be an example. The, the only reason why uh, um, when, when somebody is stated, you know, um, those who do research, when, when, your, when your work is cited in another person's work, you're... You're heaven, you're in heaven. Because why? Because value placed on your work has gone up. That's true. Hallelujah. That's true. So if you want value to be placed on your life, you have to be an example. You you want someone in your class to say somewhere that what's your name again? Mateko. Oh, Mateko is such a bright girl. I think I have to be friends with her. See, the value on your life straight away has shut up. Why? Because you have become an example in your generation. Yeah. Let us take this seriously. I've been this year. I've been. I've been. I've been praying to God and I'm saying, God, time my life is going. What am I doing? Time is going. Time is flying by. And for I mean, this is a personal testimony for for, for, for a very long because I went, when I was in the army, I got injured and I, I got out. And for a very long time. I'd used that injury as an excuse, even though it hurts. But I, I, I realized that no, it, it, I, 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 was, I was becoming borderline lazy, you know. And so just yesterday, I signed up to do boxing. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> See, this is the challenge I have. My challenge is physical. Okay. Now I want to overcome that challenge, like he was saying. There are sacrifices to be made. I can't ask for the blessing and then not be prepared to go through the sacrifice to get that blessing. 
like um, uh, 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 our daddy here was saying, he wrote the letter how many times? Four times. Four times. <laughs> You know, a lot of us, we will do it once and, and expect that once I've prayed, that's it. No. You have to put in the extra effort. Why? Because you want to be an example. It, it is not because it will make you... No. Because one day, you want someone to stand somewhere and mention your name. The value on your life has gone up. It's shut up straight away. Even better, when through your life, somebody is saved. Oh my God. In heaven, the Bible says you will receive crowns. Mm -hmm. Because if you're all going to heaven, the, the place is nice, it's good, isn't it? It's beautiful. But even in heaven, there are levels of authority. Yeah, that's true. There are levels of authority. So it is not over for us if we are old. And it, it is, you, if you are young, you, you, you have more time to, to even establish what God has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so I'll finish my sermon. And I want you to say to yourself, I am an example. You see, like, like I was saying, when you're saying you are, you are seeing beyond the challenge. You are seeing beyond the sacrifice. You are seeing the end result. Why? Because Jesus has established that that the end result is a victorious one. Mm -hmm. we, we know the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that, I can safely say, say that I am an example of Christ in my generation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.